this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is episode 3 of the So Free Art podcast and this is a little podcast I do each week about art and things and this is going to be all about pencils, my favourite types of pencils for realistic pencil drawing and sketching as well as a few other fun little pencils that I like using. I actually recorded this one last week but at the last minute I decided to talk about lucid dreaming instead and this past week I've been lucid dreaming a a lot more. Literally every night I've been having either full-on lucid dreams or semi-lucid dreams and so I, I almost wanted to talk about lucid dreaming again this week but I want to get the basic tools like the pencils, erasers and stuff. I want to get those podcasts done first before I start doing more sort of podcasts about the mind and stuff because I'm really fascinated by the mind and how art and everything relates to the mind. But before we get into the pencils, I just wanted to mention about Leslie Sater's 1330 painting challenge again. And it's today is Sunday the 18th, so it's day 18. And I've got one more. The last six days I've been painting robins because robin... Robins are my spirit animal, so I painted six little robins, and today I've got to paint the last one, and once I've posted that, I'll stick it onto the website. But you can find the challenge at satastudio.com, and I'll put a link in the show notes, as well as various other links to things talked about on the show, such as like the pencils and stuff, because I'm going to redo the outro on this podcast as well. I might talk a little bit about lucid dreaming at the end. So let's go into episode three of the So Free Art podcast. I thought it'd be quite nice actually to start this podcast with seven fun facts about pencils. And some of these are really quite mad. And I never I never knew any of these. I, I just researched them for the show. And I found them online via various sources such as Pencils.com, Discover Magazine and Igentry, <laughs> but I'll put links into the show notes. So here we go. Seven fun facts about pencils. Number one. One, the- one theory is that the word pencil comes from the Latin word pencilius, meaning little tail. But I prefer the other theory, which is that it came from the French word pincel, meaning little paintbrush. <laughs> I thought that's kind of cool, a little paintbrush. I like that one. Fun fact number two. Before the invention of erasers, artists used breadcrumbs to erase mistakes. (laughs) That's crazy. I'm going to have to try that, see if it must work. I don't understand why that would work, but... Fun fact number three. Pencils can be used underwater. That's pretty crazy. If you could get waterproof paper, you could have like an underwater life drawing class. <laughs> Fun fact number four. It is said that the average pencil can draw a line 35 miles long, although this has never been proven. Fun fact number five. The world's largest pencil is a Castell 9000 on display at the manufacturer's plant near Kuala Lumpur. Made of Malaysian f- wood and polymer, it stands 65 feet high. <laughs> Crazy. 65 feet? I wonder if it actually works. It must... Does it work? Polymer. I'm not sure. I'm going to look online to see if I can actually, if we can find a video of that. Fun fact number six. The pencil was invented more than 400... 400- 400 years ago, in 1565. And fun fact number seven. Dreaming that you are sharpening a pencil suggests that you need to be more flexible in your way of thinking. (laughs) So I thought that was kind of cool. And I put the dreaming one because I'm thinking a lot about dreaming at the moment (laughs) with the lucid dreams. Let's get into this week's episode, which is all about pencils. And there's two main types of pencils, which is your traditional wooden ones, and then these mechanical ones, 
which can also be known as clutch pencils. And I sort of think that I sort of consider them two to be the same, but they do handle a bit differently. So the mechanical pencil, you click the top and the lead comes out in stages. Whereas with a clutch pencil, you click the top and the lead falls out the bottom until you let go of the top. So they handle a bit differently. And clutch pencils are normally thicker leads. And I personally prefer mechanical pencils. I hardly ever use normal pencils. In fact, I don't think... I can't really remember the first time I used... I can't remember the last time I used a wooden pencil. So the, the reason I like mechanical pencils is... The main reason is you don't have to sharpen them. So because the leads are always inside and you can like put loads of leads inside sort of like stack them up so one single mechanical pencil lasts a lot longer than one standard wooden pencil if you've got loads of leads inside of it so I like that you also because it's because the lead is so thin the the point is always really sharp it can it's much more like nicer to hold in the hand because it's it's been moulded to shape in hand whereas wooden pencils are just like wooden pencils (laughs) but there's nothing wrong with wooden pencils it's just the mechanical ones just feel a bit better I think they just look much cooler really because you can get different coloured cases fat ones thin ones soft ones hard ones you get ones with rubber grips on basically like if you search for mechanical pencils you'll just see how there's so many different st- styles and it's, I just think that's really cool and because you don't have to sharpen them your pencil always feels the same it's it's never going to like shrink down that's one thing I I really ha- like hate about pencils normal pencils is that they end up getting so small that <laughs> it gets a bit mad so that's the main reason why I like mechanical pencils and with clutch pencils, they're basically just fatter mechanical pencils. But the reason they're really good is because because you can get such a fat lead on it. I was like one of the fat clutch pencils I've got is six millimeters, which is probably about three, maybe even four or five times thicker than a normal pencil. And so that means you can get really fat lines, but also really thin lines. So you can, you can, and you can go from fat to thin. So you can create really nice different line effects with that one pencil. And then there's another reason, which is of course you're not destroying the trees because you don't need to have the wooden pencil. <laughs> so that's, that's that's probably the best reason to go with mechanical pencils. Because we all love trees. But I will say there is something satisfying about sharpening pencils which I do miss and then for leads I personally like to I only really use three leads I use either 2H, 2B or 4B and I find the 2B is my go-to lead if I'm ever on the bus sketching or something it's always the 2B that I go for and if somebody was to come up to me and say like I'm going to take all your pencils away and you can only ever have one lead for the rest of your life. I would say I would choose the 2B because it's soft enough to go really dark. But it's also not so soft that you can still go quite light with it. So you can get a nice range. And because it's soft, I like the way it feels on the paper. So that's my personal favourite is the 2B. And I never really go below... 2H I don't I don't find you need to go that light and I don't normally go above 4B because 4B seems to get very dark that seems to get dark enough for me so that's why I have a 2, 2H and a 4B as well just so I can get super light and super dark if I want to but let's get into the actual pencils and what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the little like overviews that I've done I've done on the website but as I said last week it's worth 
remembering that these are just my favourites and like everybody is different so I would always say just try every single pencil you can possibly get and see see which one you like so I'm just going to do like a little brief overview of these different types of pencils and the first ones are the 0.5mm mechanical pencils there's not much to say really other than basically I just try loads of different ones because they all feel so different just try loads of different ones and then you'll find a couple that really feel comfortable in your hand and then all you've got to do then is just make sure you've always got those in your pencil case <laughs> and you're sorted and it's ironic that my favourite mechanical pencil is this tiny little thin like mint green one which I got for 50p in the in WH Smiths <laughs> so it's like the cheapest pencil I could ever find I bought all these like really expensive Pentel ones and stuff but my favourite one turned out to be this cheap one <laughs> So that's why I would say, like, just try everything. And I only bought that because it had a nice pattern on it. <laughs> so that's that. But I always have, like, a 2H, a 2B and a 4B a mechanical pencil in my left hand while I'm drawing so that I can just quickly switch between the leads. And they are prone to snapping. Like, the leads are prone to snapping, especially the H ones. But I found that the... The, like the H leads, they seem to last for ages, whereas the soft ones, because the lead is obviously is much more like chalk, they don't last as long. Um, that's it really. I mean, these are, these are good for realistic pencil drawing, especially like drawing hair, because they're so thin. You can just spend hours doing each like strand of hair or fur on an animal. Like these are perfect for that because you can just make it look really dense by doing all these little lines whereas if you use a normal pencil you wouldn't be able to get as fine a point unless you kept sharpening the pencil and that's why I like these mechanical pencils because you've always got a really sharp like really sharp thin point they're also good for life drawing class but I would it depends what you're doing if you're doing a short pose I'd never use them for short poses because you can't really get fast motions with them without them snapping. They're probably going to snap if you do that. Whereas a clutch pencil is much better for life drawing because it's so thick you can just go crazy with that one. <laughs> uh, they're, also, they're good for fine detail. Um, segment drawings, sketches. It, like I said, the 2B is really good for sketching. And, and that's it really. It's, it's just like my go-to pencil. It's my go-to pencil, it's my most used pencil, and um, it's just, it does the job, I guess. <laughs> the next ones are the St Stratler Mars Technico 2mm clutch pencils. Uh, something about these, they're like, if you Google them or something, or go on the show notes, you'll see that they're all blue. They only come in, in a blue, like, case with a metal end, and... For a couple of years, I had three of these blue ones, and one was a 2B, one was a 4B, and one was a, what was it, a 2H, and, like, for a couple of years, I didn't, I couldn't tell the difference between them, because they were all blue, so I put little stickers on them, uh, with, like, 2H and 2B on, and then it was only a couple, I think it was either last year or the year before, I was going through the refills and I realised in the end of the refills are these little coloured caps and if you and you can unscrew the end of this pencil and replace the silver end with a coloured cap. <laughs> so that means then you would know that the red cap is 2B, the purple cap is you know 4B and stuff like that. So they did think about that. It's just, I, I, they don't make it very clear, actually, because when you pick up the refill, it just looks like that colour is part of the packaging. It's only once I started playing around with it, I realised that that was in there, so that's a little tip, because you might have not realised that either. <laughs> but these are really good pencils for covering larger areas. I don't... 
I don't use them much for realistic pencil drawings because I find they they can't do as much detail and I find the blending of them isn't as smooth as a mechanical pencil but they're good for life drawing class because you can cover a larger area because at life drawing class you're limited for time. They're also really good for sketching and basically stuff like that. They're really good pencils. They feel really nice. They're really comfortable to hold and has a nice weight. And like you'll use it for a little bit and you'll steam. It'll just become part of your hand sort of thing. It's, it's a very comfortable pencil to use. And the lead is, because it's 2mm, I would say it's identical to a regular pencil. The only thing with these is they do tend to get, a, they don't keep a sharp edge, so you will have to sharpen them slightly, which is what's in the cap. Because on the cap, it's you unscrew the cap and it's got a little, it's got like a little sort of um, sharpener thing in it. And you put you put the lead into it, twist it a bit, and you get like a, a, a sharp edge. Then you've got one of my personal favourites is. I can't pronounce this, but it's a 5.6 millimeter quartz hard hard muff <laughs> six mil six B clutch pencil. And I'll put a link in the show notes because it's a very strange word to pronounce. It's K O H dash I dash N O O R space H A R D. T M U T H. This pencil is massive. It's like really fat, and the case that it comes in is, I think it's pure metal, and it's really heavy. You you feel like if you threw it at a wall, it would probably go through it. <laughs> it's a really heavy pencil, but that heaviness gives it a nice feel when you're using it, because I've, I'm holding it now, like. If you hold it at the end, like loosely, it really flops about, which means you can get nice flowing lines with it. And I use this, this is my go-to pencil for um, for gesture drawings. And if in life drawing class, this is the one I would use for quick sketching and stuff. Because it's it's got such a fat lead that you can get a really... F- you can get a really fat line and to a thin one, but you can also transition smoothly from fat to thin. So you can, if you like play around with this one, you can get some really nice lines with it. And because it's so fat, you can shade lots of you can like do lots of shading really quickly. So that's why it's good for anything where you've got like a time constraint, or if you're if you're sketching and you just want to quickly get something down. It's good for that, but I don't ever use this for realistic pencil drawings because the I find the blending of it is just not very nice. Well, it is nice, it's just not as smooth as a, a mechanical pencil, and you have to keep sharpening this one as well. But the good thing about this is, because it's so thick, you, again, you unscrew the end and you get like a little cap which you put the lead into but you end up with loads of graphite so I've got these little jam jar pots and I've been collecting the graphite so I've got like half a jam jar pot full of lead so even the sharpening of it is quite fun because of that (laughs) and then it also comes with um, multiple lead types so you can either get a graphite lead in all of your normal 2B, 4B, 6B, etc. But you can also get, you can basically get like chalk leads for it, charcoal leads, like light brown sapphire ones. That's my personal favourite. It's it's like a light brown sort of um, pastel-y type thing. And that, that produces really nice lines, uh, really nice like colours and stuff. But they also do this one called a magic pencil, that lead is it, it's divided into three, so you get part of the lead is yellow, part of it is blue, and part of it is red. So as you put your line down, as, if 
You put your line down and twist the pencil. It will go from red to blue to yellow and it's totally unpredictable. But if you go from like the yellow to the blue, it will go green as well. So you end up with a line, multicoloured lines, <laughs> which I was using that for a long time for gesture drawings because it just creates like fun multiple like multicoloured uh, gesture drawings. But recently I've gone back to using just a regular graphite one for that. So I definitely recommend getting one of these, even if you just get one with the regular graphite lead in it. Then there's other pencils. So when I do coloured pencil work, I love using Prismacolor Premier coloured pencils. And I tried a couple different types, but I found that the Prismacolor ones were just so much better. It feels a bit like you're drawing with um, lipstick. <laughs> like, you know how that lipstick is sticky and stuff? Well, those Prismacolor pencils are like that. So you end up like with a sort of pencil-y paint type feel to the colour, which is really nice. And then there's this other thing which I'll talk about in a couple of weeks' time called Zest It Pencil Blend, which is it's this little liquid that you can dip a paintbrush in and you can blend coloured pencils. And that works really nice with these Prismacolor pencils. And then what you end up with, with then is you end up with a, a drawing which looks like it looks like coloured pencils, but it also looks like a painting. So it creates a really nice effect. And so there's they're my favourite coloured pencils. I've also got coloured pens. I've also got coloured mechanical pencils, which are very hard to find. I've never seen them in a shop. I had to order them online, but I picked up a bunch of them with like loads of refills and they're from Pentel and you get like light blue, dark blue, green, pink, purple etc and I find the blue ones are really good for if you're doing say you're doing a sketch or thumbnailing I find them really good for that because you can quickly sketch out something with, with the blue and then you can go over the top of that with your normal pencil which is what a lot of comic book artists and stuff do. But the reason I like them as a mechanical pencil and not a regular coloured pencil is because, again, you don't have to sharpen them. So they're just really handy. And they're also fun. For like, say you wanted to do a, a monotone coloured pencil drawing. They're really good for that as well. And then something I've got which is really cool is a white mechanical pencil. And... This is quite incredible really because if you get some black paper you can create a white drawing on the black paper but unlike something like chalk or a standard white coloured pencil this white mechanical pencil it actually allows you to go from super light to super dark it's it's like having a normal a normal pencil as a white pencil and I've posted a, a drawing I did with using this pencil onto my Instagram, so I'll stick a link to that in the show notes. But the pencil is called the Sumo Grip 0.5 Sakura, and I think you have to import this from Japan. Again, I've never seen this in any of the shops. This is the sound of it clicking. <laughs> and it has a really cool eraser as well, where if you twist the top, the eraser comes out and it just looks kind of cool. This is why another reason why I like mechanical pencils because they can, like the people designing them, they start going crazy with different designs. So like this one, the eraser twists and turns. I've got another mechanical pencil whereby, whereas you normally have to click the top to get the lead out, with one of my mechanical pencils, you can actually shake the pencil and the lead like magically comes out the end so if you're drawing you don't even have to move your fingers to click you can just be drawing give it a quick shake and it will give you a new lead so it's, it's little things like that that make mechanical pencils even more cool than normal st standard pencils so that was episode three of the so free art podcast you can find show notes and stuff at sofreeart.com 
hope you found something of value in that one. <laughs> the next one will be about erasers, and then the one after that will be about various art tools and stuff. And then I think the next one will be about just like a little overview of this painting challenge and how I found painting. So be sure to check out satastudio.com for the 1330 painting challenge. And you can find me on Twitter at Sophie Lawson Art, Instagram Sophie.Lawson. And if you have any questions or anything, you can email me at Sophie at Sophie And I was going to do a little bit here about lucid dreaming, but when I started talking about it, I just realised that it was going to go on for too long. So I'd, I'd rather do a proper podcast in the future, um, a bit more about the lucid dreaming. So, but all I want to say is that it is is very powerful. In that the last week, I've been looking at the world in a completely different way because of like what I'm seeing in these dreams, and. It, it might sound a bit weird and stuff, but it feels like you are connecting with a higher self inside of the dream. And there's once you feel that, there's no way you can't be changed in the real world as well. So, like, to me, it's just very powerful. And I can't wait to do a proper podcast talking about it. Because I find the whole thing very fascinating. But that will be in the future... And so all that's left to do is for this week's inspirational quote, and it goes to Thomas Merton. And it is, Art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. Thomas Merton. I'll put links in the show notes. <laughs> show notes? Ooh! God. I'll tell you what, you're messed up.